The following is intended to answer a question asked by a friend regarding the way evolution works. The question was something to the effect of, why aren't things still changing? When I told her they were, she gave me a look that made it clear I needed to clarify myself. That is the intention of this video. This is Darcy. She's a fish. She's also pregnant. So anyway, she lays a few eggs, some of them get eaten, but Bill, Jill, and Chuck hatch out of the remaining eggs. But Bill gets eaten anyway. As for Jill and Chuck, they fuck! And they give birth to Anna, Simon, George, and Alicia. Simon and George try to be gay with each other, but you know what they say, gay fish don't reproduce. So Anna and Simon get it on, and George bones Alicia. The thing is, though, that while Anna, Simon, and George all came out normal fish, Alicia came out with a slight mutation. But what does that mean? Well, a mutation is a random change in an organism's DNA, and mutations can occur in several places. Gametic mutations are the basis for evolution and are mutations which occur in a sperm or an egg. They are generally inherited by future generations. That said, if Alicia has one of these mutations and has baby fish with George, then their children will have this mutation as well. However, Anna and Simon's babies will not necessarily have this mutation. Now, if the offspring of Anna and Simon impregnate the mutated offspring of George and Alicia, then all future generations may have this mutation. But the babies of Anna and Simon might decide not to have anything to do with George and Alicia's freak babies, and the two groups will go their separate ways. But that's not to say that the future descendants of Anna and Simon can't develop their own mutations. Now, some mutations are harmful, but some are helpful. The helpful ones are the rarest, and the most common ones typically are neither helpful nor harmful. Fairly often, these are somatic skin mutations that have no effect on evolution, like birthmarks, moles, freckles, and skin tags. So now we have to account for natural selection. Fairly often, animals learn to adapt to their mutations, whether helpful or harmful. If an organism has a mutation in its eyes, blinding it, then it must depend on one of its other senses to accommodate it if it wants to have any clue of where it's going or how to find any food. And if a fish's mutation causes it to grow elbows in its fins, that fish may learn to walk or crawl along the sea bottom. Mutations similar to these have happened all through history and organisms have either been fit enough to adapt and survive, or they haven't. T-Rex, though commonly presented in horror movies as a lunging efficient hunter, according to many paleontologists, was probably actually a scavenger. I mean, look at the way this guy is set up. Look at those dinky little arms on that huge body. How is that guy supposed to get up if he falls down? The poor fuck probably fell on his face if he tried to run anywhere. It's no wonder they went extinct. While their smaller cousins evolved and branched off into various different kinds of dinosaurian birds, and eventually into the different kinds of birds we see today, some capable of flight, and some as practically as inefficient as the T-Rex. So natural selection is basically a scientific way of saying survival of the fittest. It's the fact that only the most well-adapted organisms tend to survive and thus transmit their genetic characteristics in increasing numbers to succeeding generations, while those less adapted tend to go extinct. Examples of selectors in nature which lead to extinction or a need to adapt include things like volcanic eruptions, earth getting in the way of a meteorite, climate changes, deforestation, hungry predators, disease, war, scarce food supply, scarce resources, etc. Mm -hmm.